So your teacher told you, you need to know your exact values. His heart is in the right place and he has a point. The exact values will not only help you in trigonometry, but also geometry, algebra, functions, calculus, vectors, complex numbers. Just like the multiplication tables you learned in primary school, which helped you with fractions, decimals, ratios, measurement, problem solving. Now, you could memorize a table of trigonometry exact values, or learn a trick that involves counting along your fingers. But if you want to understand them, we need to draw some triangles. For the sine of 45 degrees, for example, we need a right angle and a 45 degree angle. The other angle must also be 45 to give a total of 180. Now the triangle is isosceles, so these lengths must be equal. Let's make them length 1, because scaling the triangle up or down won't affect the ratios of its sides. When the sides are 1, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse as square root 2, and that's our 45, 45, 90 triangle. Using sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, we can easily see that sine 45 is 1 over the square root of 2. Rationalizing the denominator, we could also write it as square root 2 over 2. You could also tell that cosine 45 is also 1 over square root 2, and tan 45 will just be 1. Now, for cosine 60 degrees. Again, we need a 60 degree angle and a right angle, so the other angle must be 30 degrees. Now what we have is half an equilateral triangle. Let's call the hypotenuse 2, because we need to halve it for the base, so that's 1. Now using the Pythagorean theorem again, the longer leg is square root 3. And that's our 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Using cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, we can tell that cosine 60 degrees equals a half. Cosine 30 would be square root 3 over 2. And if we look at the sine values, we see the values switch. Sine 60 is root 3 on 2, and Sine 30 is a half. For angles in radians, we just need to remember that pi radians is 180 degrees. 60 degrees is 180 over 3, so pi over 3. 30 degrees is 180 over 6, so pi over 6, and 45 degrees is pi over 4. I recommend you actually draw the triangles out when you need to use them. The 45-45-90 triangle is reasonably easy to visualize in your head, but for the 30-60-90 degree triangle, students often mix up the side lengths. If you actually draw it out, you can see that the 60 degree angle must be bigger, so it must be opposite the longer side. That's the square root 3, because square root 3 is longer than 1. Now with these triangles, we can find sine, cos, and tan for 30, 45, 60, or in radians, pi on 6, pi on 4, and pi on 3. They're all acute angles, but if you want to look at other angles, such as obtuse angles, you'll need to move on to the unit circle. It's a circle with radius 1, which we draw on the xy plane with the center at 0, 0. Because the radius is 1, the sine ratio of opposite over hypotenuse just becomes opposite over 1, so the sine length is just given by the length of the opposite side. The cosine comes from the length of the adjacent side, but better yet, the cosine is the x value of this point on the unit circle, and the sine is the y value. Tan is a little trickier, but because tan is opposite over adjacent, it's equal to sine divided by cosine. You can use similar triangles to show that the tangent length is given by this line segment on the right-hand tangent of the unit circle. But I think it's easier to just remember that tan equals sine over cosine. So if we move our angle around to 90 degrees, or pi on 2, 
can see the sine is 1. The cosine is 0. Can you see the x value shrinking to 0 there? And the tan is sine divided by cosine. Well, that would be 1 divided by 0, but we call that undefined. And if we look at 180 or pi, the sine, the y value, shrinks to 0. The cosine or the x value is negative, uh, negative 1. And the tan is 0 divided by negative 1. Well, that's still just 0. Okay, now let's look at an obtuse angle. So if we go around to 120 degrees and we want the cosine of 120 degrees. Remembering that the cosine is the x value, we can see it's definitely going to be a negative value. And to get the size of it, we look at this acute angle at 60. So by symmetry, the cosine of 120 is none other than the negative of the cosine of 60. And we know that one from our triangles. So we get negative a half. And actually for any angle in the second quadrant, any obtuse angle, uh, the cosine's always going to be negative. The sine will be positive, uh, but the cosine would be negative. So here's the process for these obtuse or reflex angles. Step one, draw the angle. Step two, check whether sine, cos or tan will be positive or negative. Step three, draw the acute angle from the x-axis. And that will help with step four to know which angle to use from our exact value triangles to work out the actual size of the angle. So we're going to do one more example and we'll do one in radians and a negative angle. So tan of negative five pi over six. Step one, we're going in the negative direction almost around to negative pi. Remember pi is 180 degrees, um, but I'm gonna actually just talk about this example purely using radians. Now, we can see the tan of this angle is going to be positive because x and y would both be negative, uh, but sine divided by cosine will be negative divided by a negative, so we're actually going to get a positive. Step three is to draw this acute triangle, and this acute angle here must be pi over six, okay, because it's the difference between pi and five pi over six. So that difference is pi over six. Step four, triangles please. Tan pi over six is one over root three. So tan of negative five pi over six is also one over square root three. Easy, right? No, no, it's, it's not easy. I actually remember learning this myself in school and I know it's not easy to learn. So feel free to watch those examples again. Um, but like anything else in maths or in life, this just takes practice. And speaking of practice, here's one for you to try. Multi-choice, feel free to pause the video, otherwise answers coming in five. All right, so it's not zero. That would only happen on the x-axis, and it's not undefined, that would be on the y-axis. Where we are in quadrant four, the tan is actually going to be negative. So once we realize that, there's only one option left, but it's negative one because the tan of pi on four is one. Now this practice tool is available at 10minutequiz.com. There's a link in the description. Feel free to check it out. And that's it for this video. Hope you found it useful. I know there's a lot of concepts in there, but if you found one thing useful, then there's a thumbs up button somewhere. See ya.